Welcome to the Arclight Battery, your power source for all things Warcraft Rumble related. In today's episode, I'm going to be going over a PvP game and demonstrating three things that you're probably not doing that you should be if you want to be winning more PvP games. Now, why do you want to win more PvP games? Well, because winning is fun. Uh, also, because it's tied to XP and a lot of rewards. So, let's get it all sorted out and I will show you how to start winning more games. How do you win more games? Well, I think three main things are having a plan, gold control, and not overextending. Now, let's talk about those one by one. Having a plan. So, what does your deck do? What is it trying to do? My deck right now on the screen, which we'll walk, watch here in a minute, is my Tyrion Footman deck that I created. Um, the goal is to plant Footman on the ground with the Tyrion supporting them, and then using the other cards in your deck to support what the deck is already doing, which is your big footman push. Okay, it also means being able to respond to what your opponent is playing and doing, so recognizing different things. So, for example, if your opponents have Harpies, save your Chain Lightning for that. Uh, if your opponent has Huntress, save your Prowler for the Huntress. See what they're playing, and then you have to know what you're playing, obviously, and then figure out what in your deck counters what they are doing. Okay, now let's talk about gold advantage. So, how do you gain gold? Well, from treasure chests, from gold mine, and from also making positive trades. So like we were talking about earlier, if you chain lightning a group of harpies, then you gain a gold, essentially, because your chain lightning costs two gold, and their harpies cost three gold, okay? So, it's about knowing what counters what for the cost you're putting into it. Because you don't want to spend 5 gold to kill their 2 gold unit. You want to try and make even or positive trades. And we'll showcase that in the video here in just a little bit. And the last step is not to overextend. So once you have your push going, you don't want to keep playing things on the field. You want to save your gold to respond to what your opponent is doing. You don't have to get one giant push to the enemy's base and win in one push. You can get chip damage on the base, maintain gold control, and still win the game. So let's go ahead and look at this video. This is just a quick example that had a lot of good cases of what I'm talking about. So let's see. Immediately we have safe pilot in our hand, so we drop it on this chest to claim it. That's not necessarily positive because we're spending three gold on the safe pilot and we're only getting two. Um, however, it's taking the gold away from our opponent and our safe pilot is still on the field. So it's very important to fight for the chest at the beginning. I will drop a quill bore here, hoping to contest this, but as soon as we see this safe pilot, I know that I don't have anything else I can play to quickly get to that treasure chest in order to uh, capture it. So I'm not going to play more hoping I can get that treasure chest. I'm not going to overextend. Now, I also see these sappers on the left. This is going back to having a plan. These sappers are going to always die to my chain lightning. I'm pretty much always going to save chain lightning for them. And the good thing is, generally, when people are playing sappers, especially against the dragon towers, they run smoke bomb because you need it to get them to the towers or to get both of them to the towers. Um, so if you chain lightning them, after they've been smoke bombed, you gain a gold because sappers is two gold, smoke bomb is one, and chain lightning only costs you two, so you're netting a gold. Okay, so let's keep going. So I know that this isn't happening, and as soon as I see the smoke bomb, I know that I'm getting gold there. Okay, and then real quick, there is a big push coming to my base. There's a prowler, a quill bore, and a safe pilot, but we are at full health. We don't need to stop this push right now. We want to respond in the most efficient way possible. And if that means losing health off of our base to do so, then that's what we're going to do. So let's just watch and see what we do. We're going to drop our cobalt to try and get some gold. And then we're just going to take a little bit of damage until we can get our footman to take out the quill bore and the safe pilot. Then we use deep breath to try and kill both of these sappers. We missed one, unfortunately, because we're bad at the game. <laughs> but now we have our Tyrion supporting this push, and we don't have to do much else to this, right? Because we already have a Prowler fighting armored units with a Tyrion that's healing them. 
Okay, so now we can just save our gold to respond to whatever he's doing. And we have melee minis in the middle to claim treasure chests. Now we're going to safe pilot here to kill vultures and to distract Prowler because we want to give our footman time to contest this treasure chest. We have safe light or chain lightning in our hand again. He smoke bombs again to try and, I guess, rush and beat us to, um, or get the sappers there before chain lightning gets back to our hand. But we cycle pretty well with this deck. So another net positive gold. Okay, he's going to drop a safe pilot up top. We're going to drop a quill board to attempt to uh, assassinate it. But we actually make a mistake there. We should have just let this go because Tyrion is going to bubble regardless. And now we don't have a, a quill board to contest this treasure chest. So that was a bit of a goof up on our part. Okay, now we have a push going, but he has to deal with that push that's up there. We don't necessarily need it to stay alive completely. We can go start another push, especially with the eight gold that we have. So we want to put them in the middle to contest treasure chests again. We are going to deep breath to kill the sappers because we don't have chain lightning, but that's okay. It's kind of a bad trade for us, but sometimes you make negative trades just to keep your base healthy. Um, We'll go ahead and drop our cobalt to get a little gold up here. And we see that a safe pilot is coming to try and put damage on our base. It's very good at the moment to have them in the back corner because they don't take very much damage. But we drop a quill bore instantly to grab the aggro of it, and then we go back to what we're doing. We get a treasure chest because all he has is um, vultures in the middle. We drop a Tyrion to claim the next treasure chest that's going to to spawn, and then we chain lightning his sappers. He's smart enough to not... Uh, smoke bomb them this time so he doesn't lose gold and then we'll drop our safe pilot in the back to try and get in our chip damage so notice how we constantly have this large amount of gold like we just spent five gold and we still have three that's because we don't have to do anything once we're in control so we have a giant push going we've got a safe pilot on our base now let's just get another push going once we have the gold but let's not spend all of it just to put things on the field Okay, so we took care of that push pretty easily. Footmen aren't the greatest against Flame Towers at the moment, but it's still probably one of my favorite things to play. So now we've got Footmen and Tyrion on the field, and we've still got four gold. We've still got a Chain Lightning ready for Sappers. We don't care that this is getting stopped up here because we have this push that he's going to have to deal with. Put a Quill Bore down to grab this treasure chest. He's going to safe pilot but we're going to safe pilot his vultures and his safe pilot and grab that treasure. The griffin should come and help up here. And then we're going to send a cobalt to grab this mining node. And then... Okay, so we've got footman down the middle. It's a little slow climbing this treasure chest, but we have quill bore if we needed to contest it from a safe pilot or another quill bore. And we still have the gold to contest these sappers. So... Let's keep watching. We're going to not play. See, you noticed how I hovered over Chain Lightning? We'll back up real quick. So here I hover over Chain Lightning and I debate killing the Sappers already, but my brain kicks in and I'm like, wait, if he smoke bombs, then I Chain Lightning, then I get the extra gold. So you always give them the opportunity to spend more gold on something than you're going to spend to get rid of it. So I hover, I put it back, and then I wait for the smoke bomb, and then we kill them. And then this game is kind of just on lock now because he has to respond to everything that's happening at his base while I'm doing things on the map um, because I have the gold to do so. So we quibble here to distract the safe pilot. Our footmen are pretty squishy. They're really squishy if there's a safe pilot just blasting them for a random reason. Um, and we try and get the deep breath there. Um for the goblin sappers but we just didn't do it quick enough that's okay we hit him with the safe pilot now we're in overtime but we still have control of all the gold and we're making positive trades versus the sappers and then that should be pretty close to game yep there you have it so once again gold control is important treasure chests Gold veins, making positive trades. 
not overextending is important. Um, there were plenty of times where I had excess gold, four, five, six gold, that I didn't play anything because I already had a push on the field. It was already going well. I had control of the map. There's no reason to play more things if you don't need to. It just gives your opponent more things to hit with their spells or chain lightnings or safe pilots or blizzards, things like that, especially if you clump them up. Um, and then having a plan, so we knew that we were going to chain lightning their sappers every time. Uh, safe pilot helped us a couple times as well, but generally it was chain lightning to get the plus one gold because of his sappers and smoke bomb. So just knowing what the deck is about, knowing what your cards are good against, and just really thinking about it a little bit goes a long way. So if you learned something today, please consider subscribing. Uh, it really means a lot and helps a small channel like mine grow. Uh, leave a comment, ask questions. I'll be happy to get back to every single one of you. And until next time, thanks.